Oh, that um, is is one great thing that we have here at Winter Radio, which is our live chat room. I am now live on Facebook Live, also in the chat room. So if you want to watch the show instead of listen, you can. I will be showing you some things um, in the chat, but I will um, on the video and also in the chat, but also making those available to you if you're just listening as well. So I just I, I have so much to tell you that I sort of feel like I don't even know where to begin because it's been a while since I've been here with you all and there's a lot going on for me. Um, it must be that 2018 is the year of the card deck for one to listen advisors. You you just um, heard Mo's show where he shared some cards of his new tarot deck that we're all so excited about. I'm sure that you have heard Katie talk about the Ground Bless, Protect, and Move deck that the Psychic Sisters have written and is coming out shortly. And I have my very own deck coming out, and it is called, I know you're going to be shocked, Kindred Spirits. I have been, uh, this is a project I have been working on in one way or another for about eight years. I had have already written a lot of it. My struggle has been coming up with artwork for my cards. Um, I am not an artist, um, never really considered myself one up to this point anyway. Uh, and you know, artwork is expensive and it can be difficult to get someone who gets your vision, you know, when it's not you. And I guess the break for me, this period of time where I had a break from radio was really good for me. It seems to have freed up some energy in my head because I had kind of an epiphany. And because of that epiphany, I have started, um, well, I'm almost done actually developing my first card deck with my own artwork, which I got to say is, you know, kind of um, <laughs> terrifying. And, and that may seem silly because I do three live radio shows a week. I video one of them. I work as a professional psychic publicly. I write for all different kinds of things that are, you know, read by lots of people. You would think that I don't really get all that nervous about things anymore. But this is the very first time that I have actually shared any kind of artwork developed by me. So today I'm going to share two cards with you. Um, one is the card that I drew for today that I felt like would be the right um, energy for what I'm going to talk about. And the other is the back of the card. Um, by the end of the month, I intend that these cards actually will be available. And so if you are interested in them, you'll be able to get them. Um, I, 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 it's insane for me to be able to say that out loud. As long as I have been working on developing a deck and planning for this, that it's actually happening right now is kind of amazing to me. And that it has, for whatever reason this time around, because I've worked on this project many times, has happened so easily. And isn't it weird? that sometimes things that seem like such a battle, things that we sh are so difficult for us and that we just have to walk away from and let go of, later come back around in a way that seems so easy that it was silly that I didn't do this before. Well, this is one of those experiences. So I think I will start by, I'm going to post this in the chat room. These will soon be available over on my website too if you are not in the chat, but I'm going to share a couple of things with you. The card I want to share today is my solar plexus card. So I'm going to post it in the chat room. Um, I would appreciate your discretion because obviously these cards aren't published yet. They do, they are marked with my web address. They are obviously my material, my artwork. And so, you know, I appreciate you um, appreciating them, but of course they are mine and I would appreciate if you didn't share them outside of here, if you don't mind, until um, I'm ready to do that. So what I have done, um, which is something I've always been interested in and, and, and done some things with, is I am doing my deck of cards called Kindred Spirits with fractal artwork. And so this is a fractal um, that I developed that I believe is a great representation of what the solar plexus chakra looks like. So obviously it's got some yellow, some various yellow tones in it and some white and um, it, it To me, it really speaks to what that energy of self and that energy of confidence and that energy of personal power looks like. I've been reading ours for a really long time, and I still find it very hard to put into words what energy looks like. I see it in my head. I know what I see, 
but how to put it into words, and even more difficult, how to put it down on paper as to what it looks like, has been a challenge of mine for a really long time. And I feel like I have overcome that challenge now in learning to develop my own fractals and being able to make choices about the colors and the design and all of the details in it based on what I see in the energy body. It, it's a very freeing experience, but it's also an experience I'm so excited to share with all of you. And you'll see why I chose the solar plexus card in a few minutes when I get to my topic for today. But that is today's card and it is up in the chat. I would like to also share with you the back of the, the card back. So this is what the back of the deck is going to look like, I think. This, um, as it turns out, is um, a process that you could um, work on for approximately a thousand years, really, uh, <laughs> and still maybe never feel done. Uh, but this is what I've chosen for the card back for right now, and it may change a little bit, I don't know, but, but I love it at the moment. Um, it really s expresses to me what the whole deck uh, sort of represents. So that's also in the chat room. Uh, so I'll be sharing more of this. My, my plan is now to share one card every week and draw a card and, and share a card based on my topic and based on what I feel like we all need to look at and work on. And we'll, we'll get to what I mean by that with the solar plexus here in a few minutes. But the other thing that I have not had an opportunity to share with you yet is the stone of the year. So I frequently talk about the stone of the week here on Kindred Spirits, but every year I choose a stone based on my read of the energy of the year. Like for example, my read on the energy of 2017, I, I chose the word resilience as being the energy that we needed to work toward and bring into our lives and really develop in 2017. In 2018, oh, oh, and the stone of the year was uh, Tibetan quartz because it is a, is a, a stone of stability and um, balancing the, the root and the crown chakra. So this year, I actually, um, it's not a, it's not so much a word as it is a phrase that has come to me for 2018. And that is uh, the phrase acceptance in action. And that may seem like an oxymoron, but it actually um, isn't because acceptance is the very first step in making a change. Before we can change any situation before we can move forward from any situation we have to first accept where we are right now if we are still in denial if we are still refusing to accept whatever the normal is in our lives right now we really never actually move forward because we just get stuck in pain and we never move beyond that experience in that situation so um, this is something that I am actively working on and practicing. It's something I'm going to talk a lot about in the next few months. Um, so I'm practicing acceptance um, and an awareness of where I am at in my beliefs about all different kinds of things. Where am I right now? Not where do I wish I was or where did I used to be, but where am I right now? So I'm also really working on actively accepting my situation as it is right now whether it's my personal situation or it's my situation as a citizen, if it's my situation as a family member, whatever it is, my situation right now is what it is. I cannot make it be anything different until I accept it for what it is. Um, so once I've accepted that, I can then begin to change it. But disbelief and denial don't get us anywhere. And I feel like there's a lot of disbelief and denial um, in the collective energy right now. So we have to accept first, and then we can act. Acceptance does not mean agreement. And I think that's a really um, important caveat in this conversation, is that acceptance is an agreement. It doesn't mean I'm okay with this situation. It simply means I accept this for what it is right now. There's a difference, because acceptance allows for change. It doesn't mean I agree to stay in this place forever. It means I accept where I am right now. Now I make the changes forward. Uh, and that's why I chose Chrysocolla as the 2018 Stone of the Year. So I posted a um, postcard in the chat that is Chrysocolla. I'm going to show you in the video a couple of pieces of Chrysocolla. This is the 
piece of chrysocolla that's in the uh, postcard. This is a big piece. And then here is a nice little tumbled piece. I got this piece so that I can carry it with me. Chrysocolla is a blue-green stone that started out as copper. So let me tell you a little bit about the story of Chrysocolla, and this is why I chose it. Well, for a couple of reasons. But um, <clears throat> So Chrysocolla <clears throat> is a stone that has endured millennia of transformation. It ex started out as copper. Can you imagine anything more different from this stone that you're looking at? You're seeing the picture or you're seeing it on the video. Can you imagine anything different from this stone than copper? They're not the same color. They're not the same anything, right? Um, slowly over time, as copper accepts change and through the slow onslaught of elements, it becomes the stone that you see today. So the onslaught of the elements actually changes copper from the metal into the stone. Um, so I feel like this energy supports a sense of acceptance and surrender to current circumstances and acceptance of where we are right now. But it also encourages lasting change through slow methodical growth because we know that slow growth is more effective growth than fast growth. You know, if you um, make a very radical change to your diet, for example, how often do you actually stick with that in the long term? But if you make slow, methodical changes, one, one change at a time, one small change at a time to your diet, you're more likely to stick with it in the long term than you are if you do it all at once, right? So I feel like the energy of Chrysocolla is what we need right now because, first of all, there is a tremendous um, ability to transform in the energy of um, Chrysocolla. And, and, and we are looking at that in so many different ways. I feel like here in the United States, we're looking at transformation in all of these, uh, in a lot of different ways, aren't we? So many things that are happening in our culture and in our government that are changing, that are changing the way that our society functions and that we have to accept where we're at right now in order to be a part of that change. Um, and so that's why I chose Chrysocolla as the stone of the year. So if you don't have some, go get it. Chrysocolla is available in most metaphysical stores, at least in the little tumbled forms. It is a little bit more expensive stone than some of the others. Um, it is a beautiful stone. It is also a great stone of communication. And I feel like um, <clears throat> acceptance often requires some communication on our part. We need to talk through it, don't we? We need to talk about our situation we need to become aware of it often through our own verbalization. So saying how we feel is a part of accepting our situation, but then clear communication is also how change occurs, isn't it? So this is a great stone to use as we move throughout this time. Um, uh, oh, there's a question in the chat. Alishaya says, was I inspired by Cheryl Lee Harnish? Yes, I love Cheryl Lee Harnish's work. Obviously her fractal work and my fractal work are very different. Um, but I do love her very much. Her, her path of, path of the soul destiny cards are some of my most favorite Oracle cards of all time. When I got them, the only thing I didn't like about them is that they didn't have the name of each card written on them. So I have, and I've had this deck for years now, I took a gold paint marker and I wrote the name of the card in the, like in the bottom margin of each card so that I could read with them. I don't like to use a book. And my cards don't come with a book. There will be um, a guide on my website that you can use that will give you kind of a rough idea of what each card represents. But beyond that, it really is intended to be a card, a deck that is read intuitively and not read by, you know, by rote. Um, and, and so I did learn to read the Path of the Soul Destiny cards that way and have read them for myself and other people for many years. Never really thought about doing fractal artwork myself. I've just always admired it and and until recently and uh, discovered that really it's something I can do for myself as well. And it, in a way, is making me feel like maybe I kind of am an artist in some way, a little different way, a graphic, you know, this is graphic art, but um, <clears throat> it, it's definitely been a powerful experience for me. But I would recommend that you get yourself a piece of Chris Cola for 2018. I feel like it is an energy that we will come back to over and over again and that we will need um, many, many times throughout this year. Okay, I would like to do, <clears throat> excuse me, a meditation and then we will actually get to our topic today. 
So we're going to do my inner peace meditation because I feel like this is the kind of energy that we need in order to accept, in order to work on accepting our current situation. We have to find some peace inside of ourselves, regardless of what the situation is. There are all different kinds of situations that we have to work on acceptance with. But let's start with the inner peace meditation. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Allow your body to settle and your mind to go quiet. Imagine that you are walking down a path in the woods. Take a moment to hear the wind in the trees. Feel the sun on your face and smell the pine needles. As you walk, you notice a sense of calm come over you, an inner knowing that all is well and in, in this place and in you. You notice that you are approaching a log staircase that leads to a serene meadow with a small pond. As you descend the stairs, you feel your consciousness moving down into your heart preparing you for an experience of deep inner peace. When you reach the bottom of the staircase, take a moment to drink in the magnificent scene before you. The pond is still and reflecting the blue sky and white clouds above you. There are tiny purple flowers blooming all over the meadow, meadow nestled in soft green grass. Near the pond is a bench under a willow tree. You hear the breeze in the willow, beckoning you to come and rest. You take a seat on the bench. Next to the bench is a basket of smooth round pebbles. These pebbles represent the cares and worries in your life that get in the way of your inner peace. Choose a worry you would like to give away. Pick up a pebble and whisper your worry into it and then toss the pebble into the pond. Watch the ripples in the pond and notice how the pond returns quickly to its serene and undisturbed state. See how the pond releases the experience and returns to peace. Now, choose another worry and another pebble and repeat the process. Notice how each time the pond is disturbed, it returns quickly to serenity. Throw as many of your cares and worries into the pond as you would like. Although your experiences may disturb your inner peace momentarily, you can choose to return to a place of serenity, just like the pond. Take a moment to remember this place and the feeling of peace here. Know that you can return here anytime to release your cares and worries and also to remind yourself 
how to return to serenity like the pond. When you're ready, stand up from the bench and return to the staircase. As you ascend, feel your consciousness rise back up into your head, back into your mind, storing your experiences for future reference. As you walk the path, bring yourself back to awareness. Feel the earth beneath your feet and become aware of the sounds around you. And when you're ready, take three deep breaths. And open your eyes. Okay, I think that is a great way to kick off our conversation about acceptance. I hope that was helpful for you. Okay, and thank you for the compliments on my hair and my necklace. Yes, I don't know if you guys have seen me very much since I dyed all of the front of my hair pink. But I do really like it a lot. My necklace is my um, Star of David Vogel cut crystal that um, I wear. It's, it's actually a protection amulet that I wear. Um, it can be worn open, which is how it is right now, or I can turn it and wear it the other way. And then it's closed and it creates an energy field of protection around me that I really, really appreciate. And I, I use that out in public fairly often. So it is a necklace I wear very regularly. Okay, so... Here's what I want to get to. As many of you know, I have spent the last several years learning to accept all kinds of new normal. Both of my parents died of cancer 18 months apart. And in that time, both of my grandmothers died. I was very close to both of them. I also experienced a serious crisis of health that has changed a lot about my life in the last three years. So of course, my initial reaction to all of these experiences was denial. No one wants to accept that their mother is dead or their father or their grandmother or that they have a medical condition that will never get better. However, I have learned through trial and error that accepting my situation is the best way to manage it. Get through it and then truly change what I want to change. It is challenging and something I work on every single day, but I know I'm happier because I'm able to accept my current situation and not continually fight against something that I cannot change. Recently, I've noticed a lot of difficulty in accepting situations in my clients, friends, family, and in the world in general. The, the energy of denial um, is kind of big right now. Refusing to accept our current situation keeps us in a place of pain. It also keeps us in a place of expecting something to change magically and hinders our ability to adjust to our situation and then be able to move on, move forward. So the following is the philosophy that I follow. So it has helped me to accept some incredibly difficult and painful experiences in my life, adjust to them and move forward. I hope they help you as much as they have helped me. So these are some things that um, I have done and used and just kind of some philosophy that I've become aware of over time. And I know that these are things that many of you know as well, but I think it's good to remind ourselves. I know for me, occasionally I fall back into denial, into what if thinking, into spending too much time focusing on the past or the future, and I have to bring myself back to some of these. The first is that impermanence is permanent. Nothing stays the same. No matter how much we want that to be the case, it is not true. Learning to accept this idea that change always happens and that nothing stays the same helps prepare us for any kind of change that comes into our lives. And so it's important to remember that, you know, it's, it's okay to like your situation and be happy with where you are. It's also important to remember that it will not stay that way forever. That is not the case for any of us. Enjoy what you have now, but recognize that everything is impermanent. Everything is up for change at any time. Pain is temporary. Even the most difficult pain and the most painful situations are temporary. 
I wondered if I would ever get over the pain of losing my mom, and it still hurts sometimes. I had physical pain in my chest for months after my mom died. My sternum felt swelled up. I had a, a lump in the center of my chest that started the day that she died, and it lasted for several months, and I truly did wonder if it was ever going to go away. But it doesn't hurt all the time anymore. I remember the day that I realized that I hadn't thought about my mom's death in a couple of days. It was several months after her death, and I initially felt guilty about it. But then I realized that really, this was good. I was beginning to move forward in my life. I wasn't forgetting her, I wasn't leaving her behind, but I was moving forward. I wondered for a long time if I would ever wake up in the morning and not have the first thought that my mom has died. But it really did change eventually. Pain is temporary. Every experience has some good. The hardest things I've ever been through, the illnesses and deaths of my parents, have brought positives into my life. I don't think I could have said that at the time, but as I look back on it, I do realize that I learned so much about myself through this process. I got closer to them, let go of little things that don't matter anymore, and I learned how to live with impermanence. Happiness is possible in any situation. Being happy does not mean that everything is perfect all the time. It means that you roll with the punches, learn to accept your situation as it is, and recognize that every experience you have makes you who you are. Acceptance truly does bring happiness. You can't change the past. Our lives move in one direction, and that direction is forward. Spending time lamenting the past does nothing but waste your time and make you miserable. There was nothing I could have done to save the lives of my parents. This was their path. It was what they were meant to do. My job was actually to learn to adjust to it. Your thoughts create your reality. And I don't mean this in the write yourself a million dollar check and everything will be perfect kind of way. Your thoughts set up your energy body, your mood and your emotional responses to whatever you experience. If you fall into negative thinking, denial, self-pity, or any other kind of thought that keeps you stuck in the past and wishing for a different present, this makes you unhappy and frustrated. You can't control what you feel, but you can control what you do with that. Emotions are kind of like breathing. They just happen to us. We don't really control them. And we also, but we, oh, and we also don't choose them. Sorry, found an error. <laughs> we also don't choose them. But what we do choose is our response to them. We have much more control over our emotional responses than we generally accept. It's important to remember that part. You know, we um, have a tendency to label certain emotions as being bad or wrong or negative or low vibrating or whatever. Well, the reality is it doesn't mean that we cannot have them. Everybody gets angry. Everybody gets sad. Everybody gets um, pissed off. Everybody gets frustrated. Everybody feels guilt and shame and grief. We all feel those emotions, even though we don't really like them. We do all feel them. But it is what we do with them that matters. It is not that they occur. We are basically not in any control about if they occur or not. Have you ever been really surprised about being really hurt or angry or upset about something that you really didn't expect that you would be? Right? It's a great example of the fact that we aren't in control of them. They happen to us. It is what we do with them that matters. And last but definitely not least, be kind to yourself. In time of change and difficulty, we have a tendency to be really hard on ourselves. We're only human and we go through periods of denial. We go through wishing we could change the past. This is real and it's just part of being us. Your goal is not to be perfect because that doesn't exist. Your goal is to take good care of yourself and work toward a place of acceptance. And if you have a day where you're pissed and you don't want this any of this to be true anymore, okay, that's okay. Have your day. And tomorrow, try again. I'm going to talk about acceptance from a bunch of different angles and go deeper into all of these throughout my next few shows because I feel like this is an energy that's very important for all of us and that we, we need to look at it um, you know, and I realize that it's different for every one of us. And so some of you, you know, have some area of being, um, accepting in certain areas of your life and other areas that are not, you're just struggling with more. Um, I would love to hear about and talk about those things. If you want to share them in the chat room, 
I would, I would love it if you would share us with us some things that are difficult for you to accept. I'll, I'll, well, I'll go ahead and do that. I'll give you a minute to do that. And while you're doing that, I'm going to tell you one that I still struggle with. Um, I'm diabetic. I've been diabetic for 10 years. I don't want to be diabetic. I hate being diabetic. I don't know if you guys, if any of you are diabetic, diabetic, um, but being a diabetic is a pain in the ass, to be perfectly honest. It is a pain. It is a challenge every single day. Everything that you do, everything that happens to you in your life affects your blood sugar control. And the longer you're a diabetic, the more that is true, and the more challenging it becomes. And I still have experiences, I still have days where I really don't want to be this. I really don't want to be it at all. And so in denial, I don't always make the right choices as far as taking care of myself. And sometimes I just say, fuck it and do whatever I want and then pay the consequences later. I'm still learning to accept my reality as a diabetic. And I know that I will have more control over it. I know that I will feel better. I know that in general, all of it will be a better thing, better for me if I can accept it. But the reality is, is that I still haven't come to that place even after 10 years. So I want to tell you that because I want you to understand that it's okay if you haven't accepted something. There's no judgment on my part about that because I do understand what that feels like to have something that is so difficult to accept. I still, you know, would love to wake up one day and not be a diabetic anymore or, you know, for there to magically be a, um, a, a miracle cure, right? I'm a type two diabetic, but I am slowly becoming a type one diabetic. And that's what happens to some people. You know, um, I come from a very long line of diabetics. It's a genetic reality for me. And so I kind of always knew that the potential was there, but I didn't want to face it then. And I still struggle with wanting to face it now. Now that doesn't mean that I'm doing crazy things. I take my medication, I use my insulin, I check my blood sugar, I pay attention to what I eat, I manage my diet, I do all of the things I'm supposed to do, but I still have moments of extreme resistance to it. I don't want to, I don't wanna to have to be bothered with this, I don't wanna to have to care about it, you know? I'm sure that some of you have been there as well. So I just wanna validate that for you. In no way when I am talking about acceptance, Am I shaming anyone or guilting you or telling you what you have to do? Or if you haven't accepted something, telling you that you're doing something wrong. You're not. I get it. I totally get it. This is probably the hardest one for me to accept. And, you know, I've, I've managed to accept many other things about my health and about my life and about family members who've passed away and all of those kinds of things. I have managed to accept many of those things. And yet being a diabetic is still high on my list of things that are difficult to accept. So I encourage you to let me know if there are things that you're struggling with. I would love to work on them with you and talk to you about them. And um, I'm excited that this is a conversation that we can have. And it is a conversation I'm going to continue to share with you throughout um, probably at least this first month of 2018, if not further. I'm sure we'll revisit it. Um, from time to time. And so I, you know, I, I know it's one that we can come back to, but I want to encourage you to get a piece of Chrysocolla and remember the story of the transformation of Chrysocolla. Remember why this is a powerful energy to have. It's, we need that energy of transportation, <laughs> transportation, no, that energy of transformation, but we also need that energy of acceptance. We can accept who we are, where we are right now, our situation, so we can move forward from it. So that's my soapbox for this week. I'm really just happy to be here with all of you and enjoying this conversation very much. Let's see, and I know some of you have asked questions. If you would like a reading, please go ahead and ask. I am going to do some of those here on the show. <laughs> okay, Katie has a question. Hello, this is a silly question. Oh, I don't think any question is silly, Katie. She says, can you please tell me if I will find my bracelet? I'm trying to practice non-attachment, but it's so beautiful and I bought it for my birthday. It was on my wrist one minute, next it's gone. I have called the whole angelic team to help me. 
Oh, Katie, I'm so sorry. That it's so frustrating when you lose something that you love because I know for a lot of us, a, a piece of jewelry or a stone, you know, they they have more meaning than just it's a beautiful piece of jewelry. It you likely has some kind of um, energetic attraction for you. I would you know imagine that it it makes you feel good when you wear it. Um, you know, when I take a look at the energy of it, it is very far away from you. And I, I'm sorry to say that. I, I'm not going to say yes or no on whether you will find it. I will tell you this, that it is, um, it is far away from you. And if that gives you any information about where you may have lost it or where it may be, I hope that it does. Um, I don't feel the energy of it returning to you, to be perfectly honest. But I also don't want to crush your hope because sometimes miraculous things happen. So don't stop trying. I would consider, though, that it is an object that may be replaceable. And maybe not exactly replaceable. Maybe you can't get the exact same thing. But maybe you can find the same energy in something else. So you might consider doing that. It may help you to let go if it's something that isn't going to return to you. If you can find an object, a bracelet or something that has a similar energy to it, that brings the same benefit to you. And if you find that, it, it's very possible that you'll find something that, um, you know, can replace it and then it won't be so painful for you that it's gone. But my heart goes out to you. I'm so sorry that that's happened because I, I, I've had those things happen too and it's not fun. Ah, Quali says, I have accepted I will never have long-term memory. Oh, Quali, wonderful. Good for you. I imagine that that was a difficult thing to accept and took you some time and a lot of work. And so I honor that for you. Karen says, I do the same thing about my diabetes. Some days just don't want to deal with it. Yeah, I, I hear you. It is a constant challenge. And everything that happens to you affects it. Like, I had the flu before Christmas. Well, imagine what that did to my blood sugar. It was out of whack crazy. And there wasn't a lot I could do about it. It was part of having an illness, you know? It's just so frustrating when you feel like you're doing the things that you need to do and it's still not working for you. Anyway, I feel you, Karen. I feel you. Let's see. Okay. And Katie said she has, I think you mean Crohn's. She said Crohn's, but I think it's Crohn's. I would imagine that is a difficult thing to accept as well, Katie. Okay, let's see. Let me get to a few more questions here. Ah, okay, it's Lepidolite. Did it do its job? Thank you. Well, you know, I do feel a completion around the energy, which makes me wonder, but truly... If you love the energy of lapidolite, go get something else made of lapidolite. Get a stone, get a bracelet. If you love that energy, get something else. It's okay. Sometimes we do lose stones when they're done with us, you know, when we've sort of completed a process with them. And sometimes we just lose a bracelet because it broke. I mean, it's not always something that has meaning. But I do feel like if lapidolite is an energy that you love, get some more of it. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Let's see. Julia says, good morning, Christy, and one, two, happy new year. Taking a snow day here in southwest Ontario. Ah, okay. Are you getting lots of snow up there? We have hardly any, so someone else must be getting it, because here in Idaho, we generally get a lot. Julia says, I'd be grateful for a scan, message, whatever wants to come through. Thank you. You bet. Oh, Julia. Okay. Julia, I want you to think about what this burden is, because as I started to tune into you, I felt like pushed down at my shoulders, like you're carrying something heavy. Um, this happens to many of us as um, empaths when we take on a little too much of other people's stuff. And sometimes we take it on, other times it is handed to us because, you know, we, um, we light workers, we have a tendency to be good at solving problems, don't we? And so people around us have, have a tendency to recognize that and and, and take advantage of it just a little bit. So I want to encourage you to look at, especially because you've got a day off, you've got a break. What is it that you, you're carrying that really doesn't belong to you that needs to be handed back to someone else? Um, I'm going to list some of that energy up, from, up off from you to give you a break from the pressure of it. My sense is, though, that it's going to come back and that it takes some boundary setting on your part in order to send it away permanently. 
Um, but that is what comes up right immediately is that there's a little bit of a heavy weight on you. And uh, I, I know how that can go. So uh, I, I would encourage you to speak up about that a little bit and, and set a boundary and let, let that go. Okay. Let's see. Terry on the video says, do you have a word for me in my relationship with my eldest daughter? Sure. Okay, so Terry, what I feel like from your daughter is that she's pretty shut down emotionally. That she, um, I feel like she overwhelms very easily. And that her um, MO is avoidance when uh, things get hard. And so it's not just you, but it, that is kind of her thing in every area of life. I also want to say this. I feel like she knows that she can be a little harder on you and push you a little more. Um, because you will not ever turn away from her, no matter what she does. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's fair to you, but I would um, say that she is acting out some things toward you that are actually issues with other people that she doesn't feel is safe with. My suggestion would be to simply accept her for right now, not try to change anything. If you can, if you have the opportunity, try to lift a little bit of her burden. Um, she could really benefit from a good chakra balancing. Um, but I don't really feel she's pretty resistant. I don't feel like I have permission to do that. Um, but her energy body is heavy and she's full of, um, emotional energy. She does seem to be a real sponge and pick up other people's stuff and she's lugging around a lot. So if that information helps you, I hope so that there's something that you can do with that. I do want you to know though, that I don't feel like her energy toward you is really so much about you as it is about you are the safe person in her life. And so she can use you sort of as in that, in that role. And that sucks, but that is what I feel. Okay. So I'm sorry about that, but give her some space, try to help her to lift her own burden if you can and, and see where it goes. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. Let's see. Get to some more of you. Just so fun to be back and reading for you on the radio. I just feel like it's been forever. Okay, let's see. Christine says that she would be grateful for a scan. Let's take a look, Christine. Okay, Christine, you have a throat chakra attachment. It's in the back of your neck. One of those thought form attachments we get sometimes when we speak our truth. We just say what's true and someone else has a strong reaction to that. Maybe they're not ready to hear it or admit it or allow it. And so they might fire a little arrow our way. I feel like this is work related. I'm just going to pull that for you and clear that energy and heal it and send it back to the person it came from. That creates energetic space between you and them and it gives you some relief from the emotional symptoms that come with an attachment like that. It may um, give you some relief also from some um, physical symptoms. If you've been having pain in your neck or headaches, that's likely uh, contributing. Okay. So thank you for that question. <clears throat> Let's see. Christina says, I have a question about where I work. I work part-time at a crazy restaurant. We break so much stuff. It is amazing. Is there anything there that is causing us to break stuff or is it our energy? What can I do to stop breaking things? Okay, so Christina, when I tune into the place where you work, the energy is so chaotic in that space that I feel like it actually makes it physically hard to hang on to things. It is the energy of the space. I'm going to clear a little of it out, but I would consider, um, if I were you, asking for permission to clear it when it's closed, if they would let you smudge it or something like that, that would help a whole lot. There's just the chaos in there, and, and it's sort of a happy, bubbly sort of chaos. It doesn't feel bad. It just feels like it makes everybody move too quickly and not really think before they act. And so clearing it will help a whole lot. Okay. So I did move some of that energy out, but I do feel like a, a physical clearing would also be helpful. Uh, Amy says, would love a reading on buying a new house this year. Thank you. Okay, Amy. So I'm assuming from your question that that is something that you want to do. So let's just see. 
Okay, so I'm getting a three month window. So May, June, and July are your best months when it comes to purchasing a house. I feel like there will that preparation beginning now is important, but those are the three months that are the most likely for something to happen as far as the purchase of a house is concerned. Um, I, I feel like it's really important for you to clarify some priorities as far as the house is concerned, what you absolutely have to have, what are um, not deal breakers. I feel like you will get a house that you love, but it's not exactly the house that you picture in your mind right now. So be open to other options. Be very clear about what you absolutely have to have and what you would be willing to give a little on. And look toward May, June, and July as being good months. Okay. Christine says, at times I struggle with the fear of being sick. I'm a cancer survivor eight years now, and little aches and pains that never worried me before can cause anxiety, especially first chakra issues. Ah, Christine, that makes so much sense. I mean, it is not just a fear when it has been a reality, but it does nothing but cause you pain, right? And right now you're well. It's important, I think, for you to maybe shift your your view a little bit of when you start to feel afraid that you might be sick, shift that thinking to gratitude that you are well and that you survived and that you have had all of this time to continue living. Um, it's what I call a reality check, which is just a, you know, a reminder of where you are right now in this moment and that everything is okay. And so it is about managing your thoughts. So much of acceptance is about managing our thoughts because we return to old patterns, don't we? We return to fear. Makes sense to me that, yeah, you would have a fear that um, it would return because it's not like you knew it was coming the first time. But I, a reality that came to me when um, I was going through, um, you know, helping my parents as they were passing was that we're all going to die. That's just a reality of being a human, right? We all die. And when it happens is not so much in our control. And so it's important to put as much time and energy into making the most of what you have right now, because we don't know when that moment is going to come for any of us. And that's really important, I think, for you, Christine, to work on shifting your thinking. But I, I absolutely honor that fear. I'm not criticizing or judging in any way because I understand how that can be difficult to accept. Okay. Thank you very much for your question. Pam in the video is asking if I can see an angel around her. Let's see, Pam. Oh, yeah, I do. Actually, I see Archangel Ariel, who is, I love Ariel. Her energy is so light and kind and sweet and uplifting. And so her energy generally, when I see her around, and is, it depends on the situation, but for you, I feel like she is present for you to help you to think more positively. So if you are struggling with negative thinking, call on her. All you have to do is just think her name and ask for her help to work toward being more positive in your thinking and looking at your life in a more positive way. Okay. Thank you very much for that question. Let's see. I know we're almost out of time. Kevin says, my stay in the hospital over New Year's led to much needed rest and reflection. Shit loads to make peace with. I feel like I'm back at go, but with motivation, not without. Oh, I'm really glad to hear that. Kevin and I... I hope that you're healing up and feeling better, but sometimes we need that reset, don't we? I, I have had that experience before too when I didn't necessarily want to be sick by any means, but the break was a good one, and sometimes you get an opportunity to really rethink. So um, just lots of love to you, and, and please let me know if there's any way that I can help and support you in that process. Raven says, I too have lost a piece of jewelry that I don't want to accept as lost. Do you see it being found? It was very significant to me. Oh, Raven, I'm so sorry. What is this? This is some kind of theme today, isn't it? Let's see, Raven. Gosh, you're, the energy of it feels so far away, almost like it's not even on the same plane. I will be surprised if you do find it. I will just be honest with you about that. I don't feel it coming back. Doesn't mean that you have to stop looking. Definitely don't stop if that's what you want. I would give you the same recommendation that I gave Katie, though. See if you can replace it with something that gives you um, a similar meaning or the same kind of energy to assist you, okay? 
Uh, let's see. Julia says, my own burden of being a choir accompanist and wanting to be 100% prepared, 150% prepared for rehearsal. Okay. Yeah, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. Are you pushing yourself harder than the rest of your choir is? Are you putting more energy and attention into this than other people are? Are you overprepared? Are you pressuring yourself? Are you actually well prepared and don't really need to be so hard on yourself? Those are questions to ask when you're looking at, are you carrying a burden that needs to be released? Okay. Let's see. Uh, Christina says, thanks for the clearing. It is a ton of fun to work there. I bet that it is. It, it's a happy, fun, chaotic energy, but I do see why it is so, everyone is spinning while they are there, okay? Terry says, since I had my radiation last year, I have a constant ringing in my ears. It drives me batty. Oh, okay. Yes, Terry. Actually, I do have an idea. I'm, I'm wondering if you've had acupuncture. I have heard very good things about acupuncture with tinnitus and ringing in the ears. Um, I don't know if you listen to Robert Underwood. He has his show Living the Good Life here on Tuesdays. Um, and he is an acupuncturist and he treats tinnitus with acupuncture. Uh, I, I just, that hit me like his name came to me quickly, you know, immediately when I read your question. And so I feel like, Terry, if you were to seek out an acupuncturist in your area, that you could most certainly get some relief from that because that's miserable. Nobody wants ringing the ears all the time. You can never get away from it, huh? So sorry to, to hear that, but I do think that there is relief available to you. So seek that out in an acupuncturist. Okay, you guys, my gosh, I've talked all the way down to the end of my first show of 2018. Thank you so much for being here with me today. It, it, it means everything in the world to me for you all to be here with me so that we can um, talk through all of these things and share these things together. I have lots more fun things planned for you in 2018. I am developing some new meditations and, uh, you know, my card decks will be available soon just excited for all of that so stay tuned don't, don't don't miss me every monday but also stay tuned for the keys to awakening with velva dawn and kathleen peterson and friends and as always thanks for listening to one two radio where we're changing the way you listen to the world